the United Kingdom's overall inflation rate jumped to 11.1% in October, up from 10.1% in September, making it the highest rate in 41 years. This comes at a time when the United States core inflation numbers come in lower than the previous months, prompting the stock market to rally over 5% in a single day. Food prices are rising at the fastest rate in 45 years, with the cost of basics such as milk, cheese and eggs skyrocketing. Food price inflation hit 16.2% in the year leading to October, up from 14.5% back in September. Energy and fuel costs also rose sharply, pushing the overall inflation rate to its highest level since 1981. The cost of low-fat milk is up nearly 50% year-to-date, with the prices of margarine, pasta and spices being up an average of 36%. Poorer households are hit the hardest, as they have to spend over half their income on food and energy compared to about a third for those on middle incomes. Gas and electricity prices remain the main drivers of inflation after bills climbed up again compared to last September. The government's previous energy price guarantee did help alleviate some of the pain, which many households saw as a lifeline. Small businesses have felt the brutal force of inflation's impact as they have seen gas and electricity bills doubling with pubs and shops seeing a minimum 10% rise in operating costs. Energy and food prices have been rising since last year because of the war in Ukraine which saw the control over oil and gas being used as leverage by Russia. As Europe tries to end its reliance over foreign gas, supply drops drastically and prices increase proportionately. This is not to forget the impact of the Covid pandemic where the UK disproportionately had stricter rules and increased its M1 money supply as a result of trying to keep the economy going with initiatives such as the furlough scheme. Although it may have felt like a godsend at the time, a debt must always be repaid and now Britain faces a huge tap, which will have to be paid by increasing levels of inflation and taxation. Speaking of taxes, before the announcement of his new autumn budget, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt said his plans would aim to bring spiralling price rises under control, adding that he would take tough but necessary decisions to get the economy back on track. Debt interest spending is expected to reach a record £120.4 billion this year. In the autumn budget, the government lays out a plan to ensure that national debt falls as a proportion of the economy over the medium term. They anticipate this response to reduce debt servicing costs and leave more money to invest in public services like supporting the Bank of England's action to control inflation. To achieve this aim, the government has reversed nearly all measures announced in Liz and Kwasi's failed mini-budget. They say that the autumn statement aims to provide a balanced way to repairing the public's finances whilst also protecting the most vulnerable. The autumn statement reduces the income tax additional rate threshold from £150,000 to £125,140, increasing taxes for those on high incomes. Now, anyone earning over £125,000 will have to pay an income tax rate of 45%. Income tax, national insurance and inheritance tax thresholds will be frozen at their current levels for a further two years until April 2028. This means that as wages increase in line with inflation, earners will be moved slowly into higher tax brackets, without the peace of mind of elevated tax thresholds. The government will also reduce the dividend allowance and capital gains tax. Currently, you are allowed up to £12,300 of tax-free capital gains allowance. From 2023, this will be halved to £6,000 and further quartered to £3,000 in 2025. This move could have a massive knock-on effect for every investor, reducing the number of deposits and potentially increasing stockbroker fees for everyone. Currently, there is a £2,000 annual dividend allowance for investors and anyone with a limited company setup. Even though this current amount is down from the £5,000 allowance back in 2018, the government will further reduce the dividend allowance to only £1,000 in 2023 and make it a paltry £500 in 2024. The corporation tax rise to 25% for companies with over £250,000 in profits will go ahead. The autumn statement also maintains the national insurance secondary threshold for employees at £9,100 until April 2028 and the VAT registration threshold at £85,000 for two years from April 2024. Legally enforceable minimum wage for people over the age of 23 increases from £9 pound 50 to 10 pound 42 an hour from next april state pension payments and means tested and disability benefits to increase by 10.1 percent in line with inflation the autumn statement sets out reforms to ensure businesses in the energy sector who are making extraordinary profits contribute more the energy profits levy will be increased by 10 percentage points to 35 percent and extended to the end of march 2028 and a new temporary 45 percent electricity generator levy will be applied on the extraordinary returns being made by electricity generators the energy price guarantee will be maintained throughout the winter, limiting typical energy bills to £2,500 per year. From April 2023, the energy price guarantee will rise to £3,000. The government is giving local authorities in England the ability to increase the council tax up to 3% without
about holding a referendum, meaning that council tax in all boroughs will likely soar. From April 2025, electric cars, vans and motorcycles will begin to pay vehicle excise duty in the same way as petrol and diesel vehicles have. The Office for Budget Responsibility judges the UK to be in recession, meaning the economy has slowed for two quarters in a row. It predicts growth for this year overall at 4.2%, but the size of the economy will shrink by 1.4% in 2023. Growth of 1.3% is predicted for 2024, 2.6% in 2025 and 2.7% in 2026. The UK's inflation rate is predicted to be 9.1% this year and 7.4% next year. Unemployment is expected to rise from 3.6% to 4.9% in 2024. The government will give itself five years to hit the debt and spending targets. The UK's inflation problem has now just become a whole lot worse. With the increased level of taxation and reduction in the quality of life, many will be incentivized to move away or stop business in the UK entirely. With a larger number of people leaving and effective productivity decreasing, the future of the UK's economy is unknown.